How's it going, guys? Winter Kills here. Welcome to another Locals feature match uh, all the way back in October, uh, October 31st. So Halloween is when these uh, matches are recorded, this set of matches. And we have uh, Dogmatica Buster Blader versus Crusadia. And if you guys haven't seen round one yet, to be annotated up in the top right of this video, you click the eye. Go check out round one right now, or uh, after this one is over, we had uh, the Dino versus Alter guys. So if that interests you, feel free to check that one out as well. And as this video is public, um, there are a few other feature matches and maybe some more videos as well that are available to members only early. So if that sounds like something that interests you and some other uh, behind-the-scenes exclusive content, uh, feel free to uh, click that blue join button down below or the link in the description. Consider becoming a channel member today. So, uh, you know, a pretty uh, fair and balanced turn here uh, for our Bog Dogmatica Buster Blader player. Uh, starting with Dragoon and then, you know, trap tricking for the Buster Blader trap, um, which is... Uh, Pretty fair and balanced. So he's basically going to be able to go for the Buster Lock here. Get access to the Destruction Swordsman. As well as the Buster Dragon. Uh, the Buster Dragon Synchro, which he'll be able to get access to via uh, Graveyard Effects um, and things like that. Um, but that's basically going to turn all of our opponent's player, our Crusadia player, um, all of his monsters into Dragon Monsters. And uh, the Fusion, in combination with that, is basically going to say... That uh, dragon monsters cannot activate their effects. Um, and that the Buster Blade of Fusion will gain a thousand attack. I believe for every dragon there is. And he sees that. And knows what's coming. And he's just going to scoop. Because with Dragoon being on the field as well. Just talk about an oppressive field. Talk about a fun and interactive game of Yu-Gi-Oh. Right there. Um, I think is probably one of the funnest I've seen in a long time. So. We're going to see... A quick game one as we head into game two here. And uh, really excited to see Crusadia. This build does remind me a lot of the Crusadia combo uh, deck that I was messing around with a few months back. Um, I think the only change really in how the combo is done is what you really summon off of Halka Fibrax. Which I believe in this case uh, is Deskbot. Whereas before it was Jet Synchron. But I think now the desk bot would it just seems better in, in general than just the desk bot i suppose um and, and, and you know all things considered obviously jet synchron does have its benefits but i mean desk bot 01 does the job clearly has been you know evident by the past few months of this horrendous format i must say and uh yeah he so he goes on rotas for the crusadia arborea basically the fourth copy of arborea and on resolution Droll and no fun bird, a Droll and lock bird, but luckily for our Crusadia player here, he is still going to commit to the play. It's not a complete turn under. Still going to go ahead and normal summon, Link for Crusadia Magus. It's been such a long time since I've seen these cards. It's so nice to see Crusadia. Kind of makes me want to pick up the deck again and mess around with it a little bit, seeing that the combo variant is actually still alive and well, because I thought after... Jet Synchron got banned that it kind of kicked the bucket, but that is definitely not the case. He does have Crusadia Draco, which is probably one of the better cards that he could have had right there. Unfortunately, he's missing out on the searches for Magus and Regulex alike to be able to search monsters and spells and traps from the deck. But instead of going into Equimax, going into Halka Fibrax, because Arborea is a tuner. And if we're being honest here, it seems like the only search he needed to get off Went through, and that was for the Arborea off of the Rota. And there it is, the Desk Bot one. Uh, and right here, you're going to see a perfect example of why the previous ban list, uh, outside of like Block Dragon, you know, Jet Synchron, Oli, and all that stuff, why it really didn't change a damn thing. Uh, and why, obviously, as we all know, Halka Fibrax is an issue. Because even if he didn't have Link Cross, he'd still be able to go into uh, the Aurorodon and do some pretty belligerent things. But regardless, we're going to see Link Cross, which is, of course, also uh, guilty 100% um, in the degenerate combo 
that this format has become and why Halka Fi Fibrax resolving, um, you know, results into a combo I'm, I'm sure we've all seen uh, probably a billion times at this point. Um, so we're going to see Formula and Marcher as you do. Um, I remember pulling off this combo as well in my build and going even for uh, the, um, I forget its name, but um, it's basically just a machine link to help you step up into a Roradon so you can keep the formula synchron and then the token generator. So you can say how Link Cross is the problem all day, not how Fibrax. But the whole reason this play was evil, even able to begin, even able, it was even able to have a start was because of Halka Fibrax resolving. But then again, if it's up to me, both Halk and Link Cross get the axe. Um, which, it, it's just, yeah, look at that. Free Herald Savage. Just like that. Just because, just because of the Halka Fibrax <laughs> resolving. Um, it is what it is. Um, and it looks like he might have drawn Ash for turn, which is a super, super feels bad. But he does have an Adir Servant, which is a pretty good card. Uh, mainly because uh, sending Entis is going to guarantee a force out uh, from Harold or uh, the Savage, but unless he wants to just outright negate it right now, which he does, which is the good call, because he only has Ash Blossom and the Buster Blader uh, retrain in his hand. I forget its exact name. I think Buster Blader Destruction Swordsman or something like that. I can't remember the exact name. But right now, a completely open field, just a few back row, but we know what some of his back row are capable of. Um, so it might not be the best idea to blind, just swing in for game. First, he's going to summon the Crusadia Magus and um, attempt to pop the back row. And we're going to see a Dogmatic of Punishment here. And it looks like he's going to target the Herald, I believe. And we're going to see him negate with the Borload Savage. And he's going to use Arborea Engrave to protect his Reclusia. It's not Magus, my bad. It's called Reclusia. I haven't played uh, Crusadia in quite some time. My apologies. Uh, so Reclu the Arborea Engrave will banish itself to make sure Reclusia doesn't get destroyed via its own effect because of Arborea's Graveyard effect. I believe it also can activate on field as well. But he's going to link into Magus with Reclusia and then make Avermax, which is really, really good here. Because that's going to protect the Herald of the Arclight in the battle phase, which is just really huge. Now, this Herald is, or the uh, Borload Savage, rather, is at 3750. And Avermax is currently at 3k as well. So, swinging in with everything, it'll drop him down to 1250. And even if you were to attack with the Herald, it'd only put him down, I believe, an extra 600. Uh, or 1000, whatever Herald stats are. So, clearly not enough. Um, but he did set a card. Um, so maybe he could have gone for game if he would have normal summoned that monster. I'm not sure what it is and turned the Herald to attack. But maybe it would have just been too risky. So decides to pass there. He's summoned Ecclesia. And we're going to see Trap Tricks Trap Will Nightmare. Which is a card I haven't seen used in quite some time. But he did special summon the Ecclesia because why not? I mean, I don't think you're really trying to play around Trap Tricks Trap Will Nightmare in 2020. But it certainly came in clutch right there. To shut that Ecclesia down. That's going to do it for our Buster Blader player's turn. I don't know what that set card that he has is. But Herald of the Arclight is just sitting there. Waiting and waiting to shut it down. Whatever it is. Looks like he might flip up that monster. And it's a Deskbot 1. So I don't think the Deskbot 1 would have helped him to OTK. But there's a Crusadia Leonis. That's an extra 1200 damage. And that is going to do it. Our Buster Blader player has seen enough. And we're on to a game three situation so at this time i do want to make a shout out to imperium duelist the lovely lovely sponsor of this channel if you guys want to get some amazing play mats sleeves deck boxes binders dice and more check them out at the link in the description it's the best way for you guys to support the channel because you guys can get some amazing products out of it uh in the you know in the process uh, by using my discount code winner kills 10 off at checkout and importantly as well, if you guys are shopping on TCG Player, please do not forget to use my affiliate link down in the description below. It's the first link you'll find if you use and, uh, you know, check out and shop with that link. A small bit of the revenue from whatever you buy on TCG Player will go right back into the channel, which does help out way more than you think. So an excellent way 
uh, to support the channel at no extra cost to you. Um, so, getting back to the game here. Dogmatica going first, starting with Ecclesia. And then looks like uh, Titanic cladding in the end phase for a Flirtily. Also looks to have a copy of Punishment. Which, if you ask me, it's pretty hard board to play through. But there's a Lightning Storm. And my goodness, is that a good card to have right here? But not so good when you got some really nice chainable trap cards that you can just fire off. And we're going to see the Destruction Swordsman uh, come out here. The Prologue to send the Swordmaster and the Memories to the Graveyard. That's going to allow him to get the Synchro out. And then, you know, chaining it in combination uh, with Memories and Grave to be able to get access to the uh, Destruction Swords uh, Master, the Fusion. I get their, uh, the, Des the Dragon Destroyer Swords, but not the Sword Master. Get their names confused very, very easily. But basically, obviously going to turn all of his monsters Dragon via the Synchro, and then all Dragons will be negated. And they get turned to Defense as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> Also, Dragon Monster in your opponent's possession cannot activate their effect. So that's a pretty pretty good lock right there. Especially with having Fleur de Lee in hand. Makes it even better. And we're going to see Impermanence. And the Imperm, I think importantly here, is going to go on to the Buster Blader, the Dragon Destroyer, Swordsman Fusion. And I think the only reason it actually matters what you do here for Crusadia specifically is because there are some key Crusadia monsters that are Dragon. Uh, so even if you Imperm the Synchro, you know, you still have some in-house Dragon monsters uh, that could be negated just inherently by Buster Blade or the Dragon Destroyer Swordsman. Which I gotta say is still one, to this day, one of the cleanest looking fusion monsters. I really do like the whole Buster Blade or archetype. I just hate how its gimmick is to... Uh, create a very uninteractive and unfun game state such as this. Um, I mean, we saw in game one what happened when you add a Dragoon on top of a field like this just by simply hard opening Red Eyes Fusion. Um, so we're going to see the World Legacy World Crown in combination with that Crusadia Magus to go ahead and grab Crusadia Draco. And that is the one Dragon Monster, one Dragon Crusadia Monster, I should say. Uh, that is a, a pretty important card to want to resolve when you're going through your link climbing to help recycle resources back from the grave, specifically the monster that you normal summoned to start off this whole chain of summoning. And for him this time around, it's going to be the Reclusia. And here he is also able to create a little bit of a chain block for his Regulex with the Draco, obviously Regulex, chain link one, Draco, chain link two, although flirtily too much. I uh, wouldn't care too much about a chain block here, um, just because the nature of Flirtily. Um, but then again, the Regulex is probably not too high impact of a card to negate. Although, you know, getting a card like in this case, the Crusadia Revival, you know, is a pretty good card to have here. Mainly because if he is able to get into Avermax, he can swing over every monster he has. Um, so, you know, maybe Fleur de Ling, that would have been a good call, but not many people know exactly what to hit against Crusadia, which is one of the benefits of playing a, you know, more rogue status deck, as I've said it many times in the past. You do have that inherent sort of advantage going in against the majority of the player base. They don't know a damn thing about your deck, nor do they care to read any of your cards for the most part. So now we're going to see him link into the big boy Crusadia Equimax. Which, to be totally honest, you know, if he had the right set of cards here, you could easily, easily see a nice Crusadia OTK. Especially over top of that Ecclesia. Might not get destroyed by battle, but to be totally honest, it's exactly what you want as a Crusadia player. It's a nice monster that you can just beat over for absurd amounts of damage. You've just seen something like a Kaiju right here. Like a Jizakiru, place it in the same zone that, you know, the uh, the, the Equimax is appointed to and just punched in for so, so much damage. Especially if it had something like Maximus to go along with it. But just going to take a bit of the safer route here. You know, he probably knows he's got Fleur de Lee here, so he's going to take it a bit safer. Even though the uh, Avermax can be, uh, you can't be targeting, you know, Fleur de Lee obviously not targeting is kind of problematic. And then using the effect of the field spell here to make it so 
That Crusading Link monster can attack all monsters his opponent controls once each, and also give it a 500 attack boost, which is very, very helpful. It's going to make it basically so, you know, Avermax usually punches over for 3k when using its effect at the start of the damage calc, but here, importantly, it'll take an extra 500 because the attack now is at 35. Also going to swing over the Ecclesia, which was a normal summon, so we'll not get the added effect. So it'll take a little bit less damage. Still 3k, because it is at 15, or at 2k rather, my bad. Um, but still quite a bit of damage, and also removing the Synchro as well. And it looks like our Buster Blader player has top decked an Ash Blossom, which not the greatest top deck in the world, but looks like we're going to go ahead and see a Flirtily come down. And it's going to negate the Avermax, making it so he can attack other monsters, making it so... It can be targeted. Uh, an important thing, obviously, Fleur de does not target. Also important thing to note, usually Fleur de Lis effect here to gain the attack boost is pretty relevant because that point, you know, he would be able to crash. Avermax would not be able to activate his effect because in this circumstance it is negated, but Crusadia Revival is coming in very, very clutch here to make it so the Fleur de Lis can't do that. Um, and I think our... Our Dogmatica player may be unaware of that. Going to check out the field spell right now. Give it a quick read, as you should. And maybe deciding, I don't know, was putting that Fleur de Lee in attack position the best idea? Was dropping Fleur de Lee here the best idea? Not entirely sure. And going for a Buster Lock here also. Not super advantageous if you can't clear the Avermax because... It's obviously a Link Monster. It cannot exist in a horizontal position. Um, so Buster, uh, Blade of the Dragon, Destroyer Swordsman, and his little friend Buster Dragon won't be able to do too much, especially when it's sitting around at 3,500 and still able to attack all monsters he controls. So he's kind of in a bit of a tight squeeze here. Uh, maybe if he played Black Rose Dragon, he can normal summon the Ash, Synchro with the Ecclesia, and blow up the rest of the field. That would be a 9,000 IQ play, if you ask me, because that would deal with the problem. And then when Avermax went to activate its effect, there would be nothing to shuffle back. Black Rose takes itself out of the equation, too. So looking here to probably wall up, Ecclesia is definitely something you don't want to leave an attack position here, because that will quickly spell game. We know he has a trap trick, and another uh, trap, which looked like to be Memories... Which I don't think it actually does too much on its own. It says discard one destruction sword card, especially when we'll Buster Blade or Monster from the deck. You can banish this card from your graveyard and fusion summon. So it can just tutor out a Buster Blader, which is not the worst card ever printed, but it's not really helping you get over Avermax. So I'm going to go ahead and take back putting it in attack position, which is probably what should have happened in the first place. So I don't know if you want to say it's a wasted flirtily. Um. But it's not the most optimal flirtily, that's for sure. So now it's back in the hands of our Crusadia player, which I must say is in a very, very good spot right now. Up quite a bit in life points, and has a very, very strong Link Monster on the board at 3,500. And technically, the way his field is right now, could run over both of those monsters... And if he had some other plays to follow up, that 2,500 life points could be very, very easy to deal with. Where is a World Legacy Succession when you need it to bring back the Equimax or something? Just go in for game. Uh, you know, this is bringing back some good memories when I played Crusadia. I remember there's quite a... There's so many cool interactions with the deck because obviously you can go second... I remember when Crusadia first came out and I was playing it on my stream, by the way, link to my Twitch channel below. I had so much fun. This is back right when Cybernetic Horizon first released. I was having so much fun just logging onto EDO or uh, YGO Pro and just OTK after OTK after OTK after OTK. In fact, it's one of the decks I feel like one of the few decks I've uh, played in recent in years that um, I actually played so much of that I kind of burnt myself out on it. But it's one of those decks that I it kind of feels like a fine wine to me. Uh, I don't know why. I love playing all the World Legacy cards like Lance, uh, Crown, and there. It's just so much fun. I love it. I, I just love the deck a lot. And 
was really looking forward to covering it in one deck one month, but obviously it is on hold right now, unfortunately. So he puts the crown on field, which is really, really good here, because that's going to be able to negate any extra deck monster that his opponent has and destroy it, negate its effects. Buster Blader player not doing too much. The Florida League got cleared. That OTK window is getting a little bit easier to fulfill. Ecclesia does not have that much defense. So turning that world crown right here uh, to attack would be able to get rid of it. And that would open up, uh, you know, the uh, Avermax to swing for direct game. Direct lethal, as they say. So we'll see what he decides to do here. Will he make the call? Is it too risky? Looks like he's going to set a card. And not even go into the battle phase, which is extremely interesting. Now we're going to see a Red Eyes Insight, I believe is the name of that card. Could be wrong. Not a huge Red Eyes person. But let's see. It is Red Eyes Insight. Send a Red Eyes monster from your hand or deck to the graveyard to add a Red Eyes Spell Trap. Oh my... So he's basically just gone and searched out Red Eyes Fusion, which is, you know, you hate to see it. And there is, uh, there's Dragoon. Oof, you really hate to see it. That's going to blow up the Avermax. Of course, he could respond with Crown here, and he's, I mean, you have to at this point. You can't just lose your Avermax and take 3k. You've got to burn the negate. So it looks like he's going to attempt to respond with a World Legacy World Crown here. Uh, we know he would have the opportunity to negate as well with Dragoon because he does have a card in hand. So it's in I'm interested to see how this interaction will go here. So it looks like... I'm, I'm pretty unsure what's happening here. So it looks like he is going to... It looks like he's not going to negate. Which is pretty strange. I don't think it makes too big of a difference here. So he's going to take 2k. He's going to lose the Avermax as well. And he's going to attempt Avermax. And it's going to get negated with Dragoon. So that Dragoon's going to go up to 4k. He's also already took in 3k. And of course Dragoon can still attack for some reason. Because it's, you know, it doesn't do enough as is. Um, so that's a lot of damage there potentially. At least could have been. But he's not attacking the set monster. Which is interesting. By the way, just losing uh, in total uh, 5,000 life points. Uh, I'm not sure if Dragoon um, counts the original attack or the current attack of a card. Um, but it looks like, yeah, the original attack. So he only takes 5k total. He just normal summons Maximus. And runs over the Ecclesia, and then next turn blows up the other two and swings for game. And it's over, just like that. So yeah, <laughs> Buster Blader Dogmatica winning 2-1. Crusadia putting up a decent fight. I feel like it could have definitely closed out the game there in game 3, had things maybe uh, been played a little bit more aggressively by our uh, Crusadia player, but... Sometimes being conservative is uh, bad, especially if you're, you know, a little too conservative. There's such a thing. And definitely cost you games. Um, and, you know, that's what overthinking will do sometimes. But then again, I d with the back row that he had, I know at least he had Trap Trick. And I know the other card, I think, was the uh, Destruction Sword Memories, which, as I think we saw, could tutor out one from deck, a Buster Blader monster. But um, nothing the Avermax, I don't think, would have been able to deal with, especially with that field spell up. But then... You know, it is what it is. Hindsight's 2020. I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, if you did, be sure to leave a like. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And consider subscribing uh, to the channel and uh, turning notifications on to get notified when all my videos go out. And, of course, to help us uh, on the road to 20K. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. It's always Winter Kill signing out. We'll see you guys in the next one. And as always, a huge shout out to our Divine Level channel members here on YouTube, and that is Academic Thick, Zors, and Cadillax84. As always, thank you guys so much for your continued and extremely generous support of the channel.